Boltworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boltworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. What is... Whoa. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I hope you're all doing well. My name is Andy with Boltworks Today, and let's get started. So today we're gonna to be building the hatch off of the mold that we built in the last video. Now, if you haven't seen that, I'll include a little pop-up window in the top right corner right about here. And since we're gonna be building this part from a mold, the order that we're laying in our materials may seem, I guess, a little counterintuitive, but basically rather than building this from the inside out, we're gonna be building this part from the outside in. So here I mixed up some gel coat, and this is gonna be the first thing we're gonna be laying in. I'm gonna lay in two fairly heavy coats of gel coat um, and then we'll build, be building upon that so when we you know skipping forward a little bit when this is all said and done and we pop this part out the gel coat that I'm laying in that I'm laying in now this is going to become well this will eventually be the exterior of the part once this is all finished so here you can see I'm using a brush to apply this gel coat now if I really wanted to I could have easily sprayed this in but you know I've got too many other things in the shop and I didn't feel like spending the time to you know, cover everything with plastic and protect all you know everything from overspray. So, here, you know, brushing it in, it's, it's going to work perfectly fine, um, and it's a lot less hassle and a lot less mess. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay or you know brush out this first coat. I'm going to let it set up for probably an hour or two. I, I'm still using laminating gel coat, so even if I wanted to wait until the following day to come in and, and, and brush in a second coat of gel coat, that'd be perfectly fine. But I believe it's still early in the morning, so I'm going to you know get this first coat in. And then, you know, maybe sometime after lunch, I'll come back and apply a, a second heavy uh, coat of gel just to make sure that I have plenty of, of material there. So if I have to do any touch-ups, wet sanding or polishing, you know, after the fact, um, I'll, I'll, I'll have enough thickness there to, to do that. Now, looking back at this after the fact, one thing that I would change or do a little bit differently if I had to make a second hatch is I would not be putting gel coat on the top lip all the way around this mold. Uh, when it came time to pop this out, I had a little bit of a pucker moment. It, it, it didn't want to come out. If I had not gel coated the top of that, uh, it, that process would have been a lot easier. So laying in this gel, I want it to be on fairly thick, but not so thick that it's gonna you know, sag and run, especially on these vertical sides. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time making sure I've got it built up as as heavy as I can without that happening and then I'll come through and, and remove any of the excess. More, more important than anything, I want this to be as even of a coat as possible. After giving this gel coat a few hours set up, now it's time to apply the second coat. Now this is going to be exactly the same process as what I just did so you know I'm, I'm going to kind of skim over this but there are a few things that I do want to kind of mention or highlight. And the first is that before I pour any of this gel coat out, the first thing I always like to do, even if the can has only been sitting for a few hours, is just give it a good shake. You want to make sure that everything in there is mixed up really, really well. And if there's pigment, which there is in here, you want to make sure that everything is, is well incorporated so that the color is consistent from batch to batch. And the second thing that I want to mention is that I'm going to be catalyzing this gel coat at 2% per volume of the gel coat, and the gel coat alone. Uh, I had a question, uh, I believe it was a week or two ago, I had somebody write in and they, you know, and I'm going to kind of uh, alter these numbers a little bit just to make the point, but uh, they had poured out, say, four ounces of gel coat and then added in two ounces of styrene and, I don't know, and some, maybe like a quarter ounce of wax or something like that. So their total mix was, was actually six ounces. So when they went to catalyze their mix, they actually catalyzed it at six ounces of volume rather than the original four ounces of gel coat. And what ended up happening is that when you, when you over catalyze something by that much, the gel coat can, well, for lack of better terms, it burns. So it darkens and it changes the color. And that's the, the thing that they couldn't figure out is they're like, well, when the gel coat is cured, it's much, it's a way different color than it is before I catalyzed it. You know, what's, what's going on? And I should note that the, the, the reason that they were adding the styrene was for spraying only. You know, styrene is not an, an active uh, reducer. It's, it's uh, something that you use to thin out a project or to thin out a product so that it'll flow through the gun and atomize correctly and then it eventually uh, evaporates. 
So normally you don't add styrene unless you're going to be spraying it, and you certainly don't normally add it <laughs> at that at that kind of a ratio. But again, I was just altering the numbers here to make a point. With two layers of gel coat down and set up, now I can shift gears a little bit and look towards you know laying the fiberglass. Now. One little side note, since I was using a laminating gel coat, I don't need to do any surface prep to this before I can start laying the glass. I don't need to sand it, wipe it down, or anything. It's just it's just ready to go. That's why it's a laminating <laughs> resin. So for this process, at least for this step of the process, I'm going to be using two different types of glass. Some 1.5 ounce chop strand and some 1708. So in the order that I'm going to be laying this is going to be a layer of chop strand all the way down, or all the way around, and then 1708, chop strand, and then 1708. Now, when we get to the next step, there's a little bit of a change that I'm doing on this hatch versus what I had to do on the first hatch that I did a while back. So it's really going to do a lot to stiffen this panel up because it is pretty good size. One of the main differences between this hatch versus the other one that I did is that this particular one has a core in it. And the material that I'm going to be using here is 3 8 inch balsa. Now this is going to do a couple of things. One, it's going to add some bulk, but more importantly, it's going to add a lot of stiffness without adding a lot of weight. So there are some really good advantages to using this type of coring versus, say, like a plywood, which is going to be you know much denser, but it's also a lot heavier. And I am rushing a little bit here, but I want to get this balsa laid into the, onto this glass while the glass is still wet. That way, it, when I weigh it down, it'll just it'll, it'll have a lot better surface contact with the glass beneath it. So, you know, overall, just give me a much better bond. So I'm going to weigh this down with pretty much anything and everything I can find that'll fit. And then I'm going to put it to bed and let it set up overnight. It's a different color shirt, so that means it is the following morning and hopefully my last day on this project. So whenever working with balsa, you want to make sure that, that, that the balsa is completely saturated, you know, before you start laying it in glass. You want to make sure that you are very, very generous with your resin. So I'm kind of going a little heavy-handed here, but that's kind of how it needs to be done. Now for the glass, um, I'm, for the most part, I'm going to be using strictly just 1708. I want to make sure that I have enough glass built up along those rims so that overall thickness, when it's all said and done, is going to be eh, about an eighth inch, give or take, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I want to make sure that there's plenty of meat there so that I don't have to worry about any 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 flexing or chipping or cracking from someone standing on it or sitting on it or, you know, what have you. So, unfortunately, my camera cut out here, uh, but I'm going to be laying down two layers of 1708 pretty much all the way around, and that's in addition to what we had already laid up uh, prior to this balsa. So, in total, I think this uh, this hatch has uh, four... Four or five, four layers of 1708, and then three layers of chop strands. So it, overall, it's 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 pretty beefy little hatch. It should be plenty, plenty strong. Remember in the beginning of this video when I said I had a little bit of a pucker moment trying to pop this part out of the mold? Well, this is it. I beat, pried, pulled, you named it. Took compressed air to it. Tried to shoot it out, you know, try to get some air lift inside the, between the mold and the part. Nothing worked. I mean, I, I worked on this thing for almost two hours until finally, I'm not sure what, what it is that I did that actually changed, but finally something worked and it popped out. But <laughs> I was sweating bullets thinking, oh man, I just, you know, completely glued this thing into the mold and I'm screwed. But the one thing that I did that caused all of this problem was the fact that when I was laying in the gel coat initially, uh, before I started laying the glass, uh, remember I made the comment that I uh, actually applied gel coat over the top rim of the mold? Well, I shouldn't have done that. Had I completely skipped that and just kept all the gel coat inside the mold, none of this would have ever happened, but eh, lesson learned, I guess. Now, with the pucker moment behind me, let's get this thing trimmed and wrapped up. Trimming this is actually a piece of cake. I'm just using an oscillating cutter tool or cutting tool. And 
essentially just running the blade over the, you know, along the top of the mold. So easy peasy, give it a quick sanding just to kind of round any edges so there's no sharp edges. And then it's, it's basically done. The very last thing that I did on this, and unfortunately I forgot to record it, was I took the leftover gel coat that I had and I just coated the underside of this of this hatch. You, you don't have to, but you know if you can go over it with either some paint or some leftover gel coat, it just kind of pretties it up and makes it look a little bit better. So I had the leftover gel to use, so that's what I did. And it turned out pretty nice, minus the dirt. So as always, I'm gonna thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and share the share this on social stuff. I don't really understand how all that works, but if you do, I would really appreciate the help. <laughs> so if you have any questions, comments, please leave those down below. And until next time, thanks for watching. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.